In this video, we're gonna take a look at a red ink by Roher and Klinger, Morinda. Now, as always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. Also, down in the description is a link to the red ink playlist, so if you wanna see more red inks, you can find that there. I'm an ink guy, and let's get into the first writing sample done on 90 GSM Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen. It does shade as the Roher and Klinger looks a bit darker than the Morinda part. And on the IND, it starts to look a little bit lighter than the rest of the word. The extra fine is lighter than a stub with no feather spread, halo sheen. It shades rather nice as quick goes dark to light to dark, over goes light to dark, the is very dark, brown goes darker to lighter, and 13 seconds to dry. Medium is darker than the extra fine, not as dark as the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade, 20 seconds to dry. Now, they both the scrubbies show no color variation, although we are getting it in the medium, and a smear test you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then a Pierre Cardin president with a medium nib was inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. The next writing sample is done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. We have no bleeding, but we do have some minor ghosting going on in all of the writing. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 20 seconds to dry. Medium is darker than the extra fine, just a little lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen or shade, and 27 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show us no color variation and we're not getting it in a smear test. You could not recover if you smeared while you were writing. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down and then it's put into water for 10 to 15 seconds. Now the interesting thing to me is this is not a true red that I thought it was. As it pushes up, we see this very light pink and at the bottom of the red, where the pink and the red come together, you see a little bit of an orange-ish tone, which is rather interesting. I wasn't expecting that. The one on the right is allowed to dry for 10 minutes before it's put into water. Now we see that the pink on the bottom is a little bit darker than the pink from the first one. Moving up, I'm not expecting it to be much of a change. We do see little bits of that orange at the bottom of the red at the top, but we're not expecting any kind of resistance from this ink. The next writing sample is done on 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, and yes, it does shade in the extra fine. It goes from darker to lighter in brown, dark to light to dark in quick, 15 seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, 21 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show us no color variation, although we do get some in the extra fine and the smear test you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it generally performs pretty well. The blowout at the top of the lowercase h would make me not use it in a note-taking situation, but it doesn't mean that somebody else wouldn't. You still can largely recover the information that's there. I just wouldn't. Water is completely reactivating. You start to see some of the white of the paper coming through. Given more than 30 seconds, it'll get it completely off the paper. Pen flush does everything that water does, works a little bit faster. You see a lot more of the white of the paper coming through. The one-third bleach solution completely obliterates it. And as normal, it only took water to get this out of my pen. The next writing sample is done on P. Berger paper. Now we have a lot of bleed spots that are occurring. None of all of this bleed is coming through and touching the next page. It does make the back of the page completely unusable though. The 1.1 has minor feathering, really minor feathering. It's too, not too bad at all. It wouldn't stop somebody from using it. It doesn't spread. It has no halo sheen and no shade. Just that tiny feathering all over it. The extra fine, it has no feathering, no spread, halo sheen, no shade, three seconds to dry. Very good for a student here. Medium, 
is dark or it's darker than the extra fine, not as dark as the stub. It does have some minor feathering like on the K in quick, the H in the, the Q in quick, the R in over, the word lazy, but all of that feathering is very tiny, not something to stop you from using it. No spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade, five seconds to dry, so really very good performance here. Scrubby's showing no color variation, we're really not getting it in the writing, and a smear test you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average viscosity was 2.5, and the realm of normal was 2.1 to 2.9. Roher and Klinger's Morinda has a viscosity of 1.68, making this a wetter ink. If you're interested in how the viscosity tests and all that stuff's done, there's a link to that video down in the description. Now let's take a look at Strathmore writing paper. No bleeding, except at the scrubby, which isn't too bad. You know, not too big a deal. Minor ghosting here at the medium. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is lighter than a stub with no feather spread, halo sheen or shade in six seconds to dry. Medium is dark like the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade and nine seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show no color variation and we're not getting it and the smear test you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds, and the realm of normal was 13 to 21 seconds. Roher and Klinger's Morinda had an average dry time of 19 seconds, making it normal. The last writing sample is done on Levenger paper. We have no bleeding, no ghosting. This isn't bleed, it's a transfer from another page. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, six seconds to dry. Medium is dark like the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, and 14 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show no color variation and we're not getting it. In the smear test, yes, you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. Instead of finding inks that look like Roher and Klinger's Morinda, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I went with a gray ink by Robert Oster, their Graphite, because I do think that gray and red look very nice together. If you'd prefer a different complement color, then down in the description are links to those different playlists. So what do I think of Roher and Klinger's Morinda? For me, this is just a red. It does shade some, but I still feel meh about it. But that's how this red comes across to me. It does perform well and isn't obnoxious, isn't an obnoxious tone. It has bits of shading that come through very nicely. So what nib and pen will give the best writing experience with this ink? I think a medium flow medium or even fine can put down a very good tone and still give you some of those little bits of shading that this ink has to offer. I hope you got something out of this video and in the next video, we're gonna take a look at Pen BBS number 219.